both here celebrating our 10 million dollar rings. We'll get a little pound right here. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. Fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills. In early 2015, Ty Lopez launched his legendary Here In My Garage ad. The ad wasn't taken very seriously. And today the video has racked up a total of 71 million views. The YouTube guru industry was getting started. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. In fact, I'm a lot more proud of these seven new bookshelves that I had to get installed to hold 2,000 new books that I bought. It's like the billionaire Warren Buffett says, the more you learn, the more you earn. These days, in front of almost every YouTube video with anything remotely related to money, there is bound to be a guru. These gurus claim they are experts who have succeeded in a certain niche, whether it is Amazon FBA, YouTube, or self-improvement. Most universities, most universities in the United States have studied my YouTube videos. So I went from completely broke to what most people would call successful in 90 days. And I want to tell you exactly how I did it. Hey, 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 wait a minute, damn it, damn it. Hey, all you ball players, I just got on the phone with a ball player friend of mine. All you ball players, rappers, DJs, I got a message for you. Grant Cardone here. You see this TikToker? Hey, folks, hey. Stop playing around. Stop playing around. Hey, this is Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin. See, you're looking at this car right now, and this is piquing your interest, right? I know you're looking at an advertiser right now, but check it out. Stop looking at the car and pay attention to me. Guys, I'm, I'm in my super sick car, and I'm at my super sick mansion, and then, oh wait, I'm in an alley in Pittsburgh getting out of my Volkswagen Golf. Kale, what do you got to say to the people right now? I got to tell you a little bit about Amazon. The surprising thing is, the ads almost worked. I found myself constantly watching these gurus' videos and trying out any tools they would mention. Fake gurus create ads showing off their net worth, their car, their money, their luxury lifestyle, and their travels, and people believe they can replicate those things by buying their courses. However, most people overlook the fact that even fake gurus make their money by selling courses and selling dreams. I mean, it's crazy. When you start putting stuff on a jet, it's bizarre. Like, this door was not in here. This door right here, believe it or not, costs $850,000 to put in. So this is a 13 passenger Gulfstream. Uh, it retails for about $61 million. The legendary investor, partner of Warren Buffett exposes fraudulent gurus. This older gentleman giving better advice than a million internet gurus combined. If you take the modern world where people are trying to teach you how to come in and trade actively in stocks, well, I regard that as roughly equivalent to trying to induce a bunch of young people to start off on heroin. It is really stupid. They are always trying to get you to check out their course or training. I felt like I was missing something, and I started dreaming about all the money I would make after taking their course. All of which gurus credits to good copywriting, a great hook, and an even better understanding of human psychology. And when you're already rich, to make your money by encouraging people to get rich by trading, and then there are people on the TV, another wonderful place. And they say, I have this book that will teach you how to make 300% a year. And all you have to do is pay for shipping and I will mail it <laughs> to you. The millionaire booklet's gonna give you eight steps and guess what? First, you're gonna pay shipping and handling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. These fake gurus sell a strategy that they don't actually use or that isn't responsible for making them rich. They sell real estate books, but they don't own any real estate. Give me the formula for a cap rate. Can you define what a cap rate is? So real, let's talk about real estate for a second. Let's do well, no, 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 no. Define the formula of a cap rate. Do you know what a cap rate is? Absolutely. Cap rate what is, is it? it's like ROI in the stock market. They call it no, cap rate. It's not. No, it's Give very me the similar formula for a cap rate. All right, John, can I say one thing on real estate? Ty, you cannot teach a real estate course, and I love you, bro. Much John, John. But you cannot teach a real estate course if you can't tell me the formula of a cap who rate. Teaches my real, who teaches my real estate course, John? I don't know. Oh, you so don't you know. don't know? I don't teach my real estate course. I interviewed so, the top real estate investors that I know. It's oh, come on. Real estate, <clears throat> what's the blueprint? How can you get started? 
Let's talk about something they should have taught us in school. Real estate. Real estate made the most millionaires in the United States of any single thing you could do. Build an app, e-commerce, social media. I just tell you, one of my big regrets, somebody should have told me at 18 years old, because you could buy a real estate, you could buy real estate before you're 18 in most countries, but at least at 18, someone should have said, buy your first property at 18, and the next one, even if you only buy one a year, you start accumulating. That's how you get wealthy. That's how you increase your net worth. That's how you become not a slave to the financial system. And yet, I've described modern commerce. And the people who do this all day think they're useful citizens. The advertising agents invent the lingo. And so in insurance, they say, well, they say, the two people who shifted from Geico to the Glotz Insurance Company save $400 each. What they don't tell you is there are only two such people in the whole United States, and they were both nuts. <laughs> but they mislead you on purpose, and, and I get tired of it. And I don't think it's right that we deliberately mislead people as much as we do. Can you tell people why Papa's so good? Because uh, he's a millionaire and he knows Scientology. Whoa, really? What does that have to do with anybody? You're just making stuff up. I help people, that's why. It's not because I'm a millionaire. Because you know Scientology. Another story that I think is an interesting one about the modern life. But this goes back to a different time. And this man has this wonderful horse. And it's just a marvelous horse. It's got an easy gait and good looking and everything. It just works wonderfully. But also occasionally just gets so he's dangerous and vicious and causes enormous damage and trouble and breaks arms and legs for his rider and so on. And he goes to the vet and say, what can I do about this horse? And the vet says, that's a very easy problem and I'm glad to help you. He says, what should I do? And the man says, the next time your horse is behaving well, sell it. <laughs> Here in my garage. Here in my garage. You can actually earn a living without working a job. And I've helped more than 3,000 people from all around the world quit their jobs. And I'm gonna show you step by step how my students are earning six and even seven figures working from their laptops from home. You can make enough money to be financially free. You could be generating profit in a matter of just hours, if not just a few days. Think of how immoral that is. And haven't I just described what private equity has to do? <laughs> when private equity has to sell something that's really troublesome, they hire an investment banker. And what does the investment banker do? He makes a projection. You can't, I, I have never seen such expertise in my whole life as is created in making projections in investment banking. There is no business so lousy it can't get a wonderful projection. <laughs> and, but is that a great way to make a living, to have phony projections and use it to make money out of people you look right into the eyes of? I would say no. And by and large, Warren and I, we never tried to make money out of dumb, say, out of stupidity of our dumb buyers. We tried to make money by buying. And if we were selling horse shit, we didn't want to pretend it was a cure for arthritis. And, 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 and I think it's better to go through life our way instead of theirs. I think it's always been this way. I think there's always been chicanery. Think of the carnivals of the carny operator. Think how much trickery there is in a carny operation. And people just seek out the weaknesses of their fellow man and take advantage. And you have to get wise enough so you, you avoid them all. And you can't avoid them if they're in your family. I have no solution to that one. <laughs> but, but where you have a fair choice, there are just so many people that should be avoided. My father had this best friend and client. And he also had this other client who was a big blowhard. And, and he was always working for the big blowhard and he wasn't ever working for his wonderful client whom I admired. And I said, why do you do this? And he said, Charlie, you idiot. 
He says the big blowhard is an endless source of legal troubles. He's all, always in trouble, overreaching and misbehaving and so forth. Where he says Grant McFadden treats everybody right, the employees, the customers, everything. He gets involved with some psychotic, he walks over there and makes a graceful exit immediately. So a man like that doesn't need a lawyer. And my father was trying to teach me something and it really worked. I spent my whole life trying to be like Grant McFadden. And I want to tell you, it works. It really works. Peter Coffin is always telling me if the crooks only knew how much money you could make by being honest, they'd all behave differently. Warren has a wonderful saying I like. He says, you take the high road, it's never crowded.